Okay, we're just going to start with some preliminary questions. Um, what is your name? Carolyn Peck. And where did you grow up? Jefferson City, Tennessee. And when were you a student at Vanderbilt? From 1984 to 1988. Okay. Um, can you just tell me a little bit about your journey to Vanderbilt? What led you to attend the school? Well, I was a basketball player and I was recruited during my junior year. I uh, had a lot of interest in going into computer science and uh, Phil Lee was the basketball coach here. and He recruited me and then also introduced me to the black engineering summer camp that went on over the summer. So I came here for a summer engineering camp and I fell in love with the school, the people, the team, the intimate setting and I decided to choose Vanderbilt. Um, how did the environment on Vanderbilt's campus compare to the environment of your hometown or your high school? Well, when I left Jefferson City, we had four stoplights. Oh, wow. So the <laughs> thing that I really liked about Vanderbilt was its intimate setting. Uh, it's, a, it's a small community. It's in a big city, but you don't feel like you're in a big city when you're here. And that intimate setting allowed you to get to know the women that were on your hall, the students that you have in your class, and your, pro your professors knew you by name. Okay. Um, did most of the women who attended Vanderbilt graduate like in your class? Did they graduate with you? And then um, was it common for women to drop out of the school because they got engaged or married? Uh, a lot of the women that I went to school with, we finished together. Okay. Uh, the women that, that came in, there was a big joke that some women were here to get their MRS as opposed to their BA or their BS. Uh, but a lot of the women were very focused in what they were doing, very competitive. So we did. It was interesting to see, you know, at graduation, the people we started with were there. Okay, that's great. Um, what were the typical characteristics of a Vanderbilt girl? <laughs> In the 80s, uh, they were the, what you would think stereotypically of the sorority girl. Okay. Preppy, wealthy. Uh, that was the majority of the women. There were a few normal or average, like myself, uh, but I think the common thread was that the women were competitive and focused and determined. So with that being said, did you find that there was any diversity in your Vanderbilt class? Um, diversity, for the minorities, there, there wasn't as much as there is now. Okay. I mean, on my hall, uh, myself and my roommate, Patsy Smith, were the only two African-American women on that hall. There were times in classes where I may have been the only African-American or minority student in the class. I know it's a lot different and there are, there's more diversity in what we see today. Um, during your time here at Vanderbilt, were there any LGBT people visible on campus? You know, in the 80s, early 80s, um, no. Uh, not to say that it didn't exist. Uh, I think that our society has evolved and become more inclusive uh, today. But back in the 80s, I can't say that I, I can even remember uh, being on campus and seeing a presence of the LBGT. And you mentioned living in Branscombe. Mm -hmm. How was that experience? Did you have any concerns about safety, walking back and forth late at night? I didn't have any concern uh, about safety. I know that our coach and our, our women's athletic director, Emily Harsh, would talk to us about never going anywhere by yourself, but we never, I, I, I never felt that way. I, uh, at times I would have a theater class that I'd have to go to at Neely Auditorium and felt perfectly safe to walk there by myself. Okay. Uh, what was your major here while you were at Vanderbilt and what career aspirations did you have? Well, I ended up being a communication major. I came in thinking first that I was going to be in computer science. I talked too much to do that. So after having some community, uh, some communication classes, and especially with Dr. Fisher and Dr. Kowalczyk, I fell in love with uh, really the school of communication and different things, different avenues that that could lead you to. So I ended up majoring in communication. Were you the only black woman in the communications department or was there other diversity? Uh, there was other diversity, um, men and men and women. Okay. Uh, and then we would, you know, have different, uh, you know, debate classes and that kind of stuff. And I think the diversity made those conversations extremely interesting. Um, what was your experience being a woman, a woman in Vanderbilt classes? Did you believe that your professors had different expectations for you? 
I, I don't think so. I think that it, if there were different expectations, that it wasn't because I was a woman, it was because I was an athlete. Okay. I think that the responsibility of taking care of business, you couldn't expect because you're an athlete that you're going to get an extension on a paper or an exam. A lot of times we would have to take care of things before we left. Okay. Um, was there any tension, um, whether it be social, academic, between male and female students while you were here? I don't think that there was that tension between male and female students. I think that there was a feeling that, as still I think some today, that men's basketball and, and football get more attention than the women's sports do. I think that uh, great strides have been made and things have improved. But at the time, you know, we would have an attendance of, of 200, 500 people at our games and really wanted to have more attention brought to our team. Okay. Um, were you encouraged to get involved on campus besides through sports, and did you feel excluded from any clubs or organizations in any way? I really didn't have time. I, I think the exclusion piece had more to do with the presence uh, in the Greek system with the fraternity and sororities. There was a prominent presence of the white fraternities and sororities, but not the, the black ones, like, you know, the black fraternities and sororities didn't have houses on campus. So you kind of felt like it was an exclusion where the, the gathering for the African American students was a lot of times uh, at, the, at the Black Cultural Center. Okay. Um, were you a part of a sorority? And if so, how did it shape your Vanderbilt experience? My sorority was my basketball team. I didn't have time for anything else. <laughs> Understandable. Um, did you hold any leadership positions, I guess, on the team while you were here at Vanderbilt, and how did that shape your experiences leaving Vanderbilt? I was a uh, team captain my junior and senior year. It gave me a lot of opportunities to be in front of faculty, uh, to speak at different opportunities, to speak on behalf of the team. I think that it brought notoriety. Uh, people knew who I was. And I think because of that exposure, it created opportunities for me in the workforce. Um, my first job out of college, I was an account executive for WSMV here in Nashville. Wow. Um, let's see. Do you remember any resources that the Women's Centers provided for Vanderbilt students? Did you take any advantage of these resources? Or do you just remember a presence of the Women's Center while you were here? Well, I remember a presence of the Women's Center. Uh, again, being an athlete and so busy with going from practice to study and to your own things in life. I think that I, I, as women, we benefited from having the Women's Center really kind of subconsciously because of the, the different things in the presence and you see the evolution of the opportunities for women on campus. Were there any resources available for students who were suffering, whether it be mentally, emotionally, or simply just adjusting to college? And if so, did you find these resources to be adequate? I don't know. Uh, you know, being an athlete, a lot of times any of those issues were kind of directed through the athletic department. Uh, I never uh, requested or needed those kind of resources, so I, I would be, the, I couldn't answer that one. So I guess we can just talk about what was your favorite memory or least favorite memory from your time spent here in Vanderbilt? I tell you one thing when I when I uh, thought about that question, I thought about the first day when I came on campus and there were limousines that were pulled up at Branscombe. Wow. <laughs> and I thought, do I fit in here? And then you go to the orientation on Alumni Lawn and the chancellor says, look to your left and your right. Those people may not be here when you graduate. And then I remember graduation and sitting there and you sit in alphabetical order, and Will Purdue was sitting right next to me. And I looked to my left and my right, and I went, yeah, we're here, and we made it. And then I thought about the reason that I chose to come to Vanderbilt, and it was to be able to go out in the real world and have a degree from an institution that meant something. And now, yeah, 30 years later, it still does. When you mention that you're a Vanderbilt grad, people perk up, people wanna listen. And I think that that's something that I will hold dear to me as long as I live. Being back on campus, is there anything in particular that you 
have seen that's changed dramatically since your time here? The biggest thing that I see that has changed is the diversity and also the concentration on allowing diverse opinions and ideas. Uh, I think that we're a very progressive university and it's something I'm very proud of. I think that's all the questions I have. I think we got through that very quickly. Can we ask some other questions? Like you can, some? yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious like about women's sports when you were here, you know, because Title IX would have been like 10 years earlier and so, and you mentioned something about um, attendance and attention, but like, what was the feeling among the women athletes? Maybe not just, I mean, were there other teams besides basketball? Um, let's see, there was a women's uh, swimming and diving team. Uh, but I still, I, I think that us as female athletes at that time, it, we were still clawing uh, to be recognized equally as, as the men. Um, the attendance uh, was, was slow, but it continued to grow, um, you know, to the point in the recognition that, that women's basketball is now. Um, having the, felt like the, the marketing behind the women's team was one that it didn't matter. It was kind of a second, second thought. Uh, now it's growing to be more of a prominent sport, uh, especially the women's basketball piece. And I think that success, you have to succeed to bring attention uh, in the women's sports where men's sports, I feel like people kind of follow anyway. And so, um, you know, you look today and our soccer team has the potential of potentially getting an NCAA tournament. It's gaining more attention. Um, with Stephanie White coming in as our head coach, now uh, if we continue to progress and win, that will be what brings attention to the women's game. Is there anything that you would like to see change for your female athletes as far as not necessarily attention, but that's what am I trying to ask? From your experience and seeing the experience of your, I guess, athletes now, is there something in particular that you want for them that they're not getting now? I'd like to see more features on these women as individuals because they have some fantastic stories that I think won't be really brought to the forefront unless they have to experience success on the field, on the court, in the pool first. And there are some phenomenal women that are here at Vanderbilt that I would like to see more features on them. Do you have another question? Hmm. So was there a feeling of, and you asked about tension in the classroom, but was there tension among athletes in the sense like, because the women athletes didn't get as much you know, I, I, I really feel like there was more of a camaraderie mm -hmm. with the athletes, um, you know, because the athletes supported the athletes. You know, a lot of times at our games, the fans that were in the stands were football players or basketball players or, you know, women from, like on my hall, I had uh, hallmates that were on the swim team that were at our basketball games, which made us then want to go and support them. And so I think that camaraderie, I think amongst the athletes, there wasn't that, that tension or competition. It was more of a sport. We just went through these questions really, really quickly. <laughs> There's a lot of questions on here too. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Um, were there any like rules as a woman you felt like you had to abide by, whether they be explicitly written down or just like known? I'll tell you when we traveled, uh, Emily Harsh was the first and only women's athletic director uh, of athletic sports here. And when we traveled, uh, Ms. Harsh made it a point that we had to travel in dresses or in skirts. Coming from high school, I, I hated wearing dresses or skirts. 
I appreciate it now uh, in understanding uh, just the presence. It didn't necessarily have to be a skirt, but to dress nice. And so now understanding you only get that one chance to make a first impression. So I understand what she was doing then, but I didn't like it. <laughs> Do you felt like there was any obligation to act more, I guess, mm, feminine? Not feminine, how much? I we were discussing how um, in Vanderbilt history, like women had to sign in and out of the dorms and they were also just like, I guess, supposed to act like the morally upstanding, like you couldn't have guys over. Did you feel like you were under those restrictions or something similar that you had to act upstanding? You couldn't just really hang out with guys, you know what I mean? I understand what you mean, but it wasn't the case in the 80s. The thing that was surprising to me was that the dorms were co-ed. You know, oh and I and they were able to get you know, um, you know, you guys could you could come up on your hall or you could go on their hall. And when I was moving in, my dad was like, "What is this?" <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> so, so, but the 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 thing that I think really came out of all of that was remembering, as my grandmother would say, home training. And so I think the expectation to, was re to remember how you were raised and to make sure that you carried that with you and you had respect for yourself and that would allow you to present yourself to be respected by others. I know earlier we talked about um, you coming in and feeling definitely noticing a difference between like your socioeconomic status and others around you. Did those negatively impact your relationships or how did you overcome that difference with your classmates and form a bond? You know, first coming in, and like I said, when um, uh, Stephanie Stuckey, who is the granddaughter of Stuckey's, the uh, stop that you see on the interstate, is on your hall, and you want to go, well, I can't keep up. I, I, and when you learn it's not about money, it's about people. And the things that we were able to do together, study together, when you study for a class, doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. Uh, the commonalities and the support that you had for each other. And it quickly, um, you learn to see that people who could afford to pay to come here versus uh, people who also had the, met the same academic requirements, it didn't matter. You were still going to receive the same education. And I know you mentioned earlier about the BCC. Was it a place while you were here that a lot of black students convened, even non-Greek black students? Absolutely. You know, a lot of times on Friday nights or Saturdays after football games, or even during the day, um, during a class break. I mean, that might be a place where we would go and, and just study or meet up or find out what was going on in the African-American community uh, because of different postings and things that would be put up at the house. And did you, I know now there's a lot of talk about, called Black Vandy University, like BVU, and it's, I guess a, a very visible divide between the black students on campus and other students. Did you feel that divide while you were here? I don't know that I felt um, a divide. It was just uh, an area to where you could get support okay. because there was such a small number of us at the time that you kind of felt like you were isolated and so you just needed that encouragement or somebody next to you that could, that would say to you, you can do it. You can be here. You belong. Okay. And was there anything else besides the BCC offered for black students while you were here just as a, like a resource? Well, the majority of the African American students I was around, we were athletes. Okay. So we were kind of a support system for each other. Was there something that you would have changed about your experience here and why? You know, coming from East Tennessee, people couldn't understand being so close to Knoxville why I didn't go to Tennessee. And in the process, I think that they won 
two or three national championships while I was here at Vanderbilt. And so people asked me, would you, do you ever second guess your decision? And my answer is not one second. If I had to do it all over again, I'd do it the exact same way. Um, you know, you had asked me about my favorite experiences, and there are so many. You know, trying to find a top, you know, five is hard because I really enjoyed my experience here. You know, I love Vanderbilt so much, and my husband, boyfriend at the time, knew it. He brought me back here to propose. Wow, so that's really cute. I, I oh. just, um, I love this place. It's a great place. And it, you know, my decision to come to Vanderbilt really played a part in all of the opportunities that I've had after I've graduated. I've sold television advertising, pharmaceuticals, I've played professionally, I've coached in college, I've coached professionally, professional athletes, and I've worked in television. And I think all of that stems from my decision to come to Vanderbilt. Is there anything being back that you are actively seeking to make better here? You know, one of the things that I, I would like to do is to be more in touch with our students. Um, just, and, and especially our female students, of what this degree really means. You know, we're in, an, in a time in our society, an evolution of women and, and women equality and trying to get equal pay. And when you have a degree that competes with the best, of really emphasizing that to our young women of what the possibilities are for them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay.